Hey, I'm Zander's H Plays. Welcome to my top 10 builds of 2022. This is a selection of my favorite builds from the past year. It's sort of roughly ordered in terms of the amount of views that it got, because I figure those are the ones that you guys like the best. But there are a few older builds that I've bumped up the list because I really like them and I thought they deserved a place in this list. Let's get started with the number 10. The first build on the list is the Entrance Aquarium at the Wetlands, Florida. I've always got a plan in my head as to what I want to achieve with each build, and sometimes I achieve it and sometimes I don't. But with this one, I succeeded with what I was trying to achieve. So I wanted the entrance to be low so that you could still see see all the uh, cypress trees and, and all the sort of wetland environment behind it. And I wanted it to incorporate an aquarium that looked like it was um, sort of floating off the floor, which isn't particularly hard to do in real life, uh, but impossible to do in Planet Zoo. Uh, but I managed to achieve it just by sort of the use of perspective. And I like this little mural that I made on the walls as well with some of the decals and the stickers. Building entrances is one of my favorite things to do. And this was a good one. Next up is Raccoon Woods at the Moonlight World Zoo. I wanted with this one to build the smallest possible overpass that I could for the raccoons. And these guys got really small hitboxes, so that made it a bit easier. I'd only ever built one overpass before, which was a huge one for the giant otters at Tecton Zoo, which we will take a look at a bit later on in the video. So I wanted to try and build a really small one. And I was really pleased with how it turned out. I love how the lighting looks at night in this habitat and it looks pretty decent in the daytime as well. Next up, we've got the Reptiles of the Desert exhibit at Tecton Zoo. One of my other favorite things to do, apart from building entrances, is to try and make the exhibit boxes in Planet Zoo look interesting. And I think this is my best attempt at doing that. I really like the way the three exhibits are all sort of seamlessly joined together. I use plaster pieces and decals in between each habitat, so that the sand seems to be one continuous um, sort of length of sand rather than three separate boxes stuck together. And the way I've angled it, I just think it looks really good. This is one of my favorite builds ever, uh, which is funny considering it's an exhibit, but um, yeah, I really like doing these. Next up is the Beaver Sawmill at the Moonlit World Zoo. This is based on a real habitat in the Wildlands Adventure Park in the Netherlands. And the big sort of sawmill log chopping machine, whatever you want to call it at the back, that's taken directly from that build. Most of this habitat is taken from that build, a lot of the rock work as well. And then I made a little beaver lodge as well from the stick pieces. And I really like the way that this habitat hangs together. It's almost a shame that it has to be seen at night. <laughs> But, you know, beavers are primarily nocturnal, so that is the way it goes. And uh, yeah, I was really happy with the way this habitat turned out. Now we got one of my most successful builds on YouTube, and probably one of my most successful builds from a creative standpoint, the platypus pool at the Wetlands, Florida. I was so happy with how this came together. Originally when I designed it, I thought it might be a bit too tectony to go into the wetlands. So I spent a lot of time adding in like the murals that you can see at the back and all the vegetation and trying to make it look more modern with a small M than a big M than something from Tecton Zoo but just the way I managed to make it so small and the way it's just a, a circle, I really like the way it looks. And this is definitely one of my favorite builds that I've done. And then we have one of my favorite builds of all time, the Swamp at Tecton Zoo. This is a close contender for my favorite ever build. I just love the way that this looks and the way I managed to get a really swampy feel inside this very modernist, austere architecture. I had to change it after I built it because unfortunately Tecton Zoo is in franchise mode and the guests kept running away screaming every time the alligators got anywhere near the path, despite the path being perfectly safe and suspended above the pool. So the path that you can see going all the way through the exhibit's gone now, along with the little exhibits for the terrapins and the frogs. But even with just a viewing platform at the front, this is still one of my favorite ever builds. I think this was a real sort of turning point in terms of my skills in this game making something that achieved exactly what I wanted to achieve and uh, you guys seem to agree I'm uh, really glad that you enjoyed it. Next up we have the Crane Avery at the Wetlands Florida. This is my favorite habitat in the wetlands. It's based on an Avery in Geneva called the Bois de Bati uh, and I saw a picture of it when I was doing some research and I absolutely loved the way it looked and the white concrete roof and the poles that support it and the crazy shape that it's got. I think the original is designed for multiple birds. Um, there's only one species in my version of it, and it's just got this elegant kind of lines to it, which I really liked. So I just decided to recreate it. Didn't really make many changes, 
and just put a load of water in the middle for the cranes and yeah one of my favorite habitats and now the biggest habitat in this video south american giants at texon zoo this was the first time i tried to make a single build that incorporated different habitats rather than just sort of designating a part of the zoo as an area and building loads of individual habitats in it and i really like the way that you sort of climb up through this machu picchu inspired area with habitats for capybara anteater and giant otter then get to this huge modernist building with a sky bridge and pools for the otters and then behind that is the habitat for the jaguar yeah i was really pleased with the sort of combination of old machu picchu inspired architecture and then modernist architecture and this sky bridge as well i just love the way it works and the way the otters run across it and then dive into one of their pools and then swim about underwater. It took a long time to build, probably took about a month, I think, altogether. I think it was a month well spent, and I really like the, uh, the end result. At number two on the list is probably my favorite build of all time, the night house at Tecton Zoo. I spent so long building this. I remember having to sort of delay Tecton Zoo by like two weeks or something while I built it, but I just had such a specific vision in mind of this circular night house with habitats going all the way around the walls in a circle um, and circular habitats are not easy to build and also I wanted a sort of brutalist look rather than a modernist look so I wanted to use grey concrete and lots of texture and just a load of things I hadn't really done before so I spent a lot of time on it but I was really happy with how it turned out I think like I say this is probably my favourite build of all time now, the only reason it's not number one on the list is because one of my other builds had so many views that I just uh, felt like it had to be number one. Obviously, you guys must have liked it, so we'll look at that next. But yeah, this was a build where I achieved everything I wanted to achieve. I'm not entirely sure I could have done it any better. All right, let's look at number one on the list, which is the Flying Forest at the Moonlight World. This is by far my most popular habitat build video ever. Uh, probably because it was an early access video so I think this was the first time that anyone had seen sort of flying animals in Planet Zoo. It absolutely blew me away the first time I put the new walkthrough exhibit in and put the bats in it and uh, when I realised that you could make the walls and the ceiling invisible and realised you could just sort of make a huge aviary and just dot the exhibits about in it and make it look like the whole aviary was for the bats and there was no walls no barriers no limits to where the bats could go ah oh, it was just so good and even though it didn't actually take that long to build just the the final result of walking through it and seeing the bats fly everywhere is just absolutely amazing that is my top 10 builds for 2022 thank you so much for watching my channel this year thank you for all your support i am very much looking forward to 2023 i look forward to seeing you then thanks for watching and see you later